All right, hey guys, welcome in today. I got a cool art Halloween kind of spider web that we are doing today. We're gonna have some fun with this. Lots of options on this um, from really beginner, kind of maybe second or third grade level that I could do this with. Um, kind of in the middle, fourth or fifth grade, and even middle school. Um, you have to you really, really push your skills on this one, especially around the Halloween type of, time of year. You don't have to use a ruler. It is totally up to you, but some kids it makes them um, a little bit easier to divide up their paper. You can start with from one edge to the other one, just drawing a line all the way across, and then doing the same thing on the other side. Then you can go right down the middle. So kind of like an X and a plus sign mixed in. Main thing that you can understand for this one to get it right is that whatever your lines go on this, um, make sure that they have an arch to them. If they get kind of too straight or kind of perpendicular, um, if they don't have that nice arch and kind of almost connect with these edges, it won't look as much of an optical That's illusion. Like, I want to show you there's two different options that you can do um, or that I've seen before with this type of spider web optical illusion. I guess the more op art to have the, all the arches kind of alternate and one goes up, the next one goes down. One goes up and the next one goes down and then you alternate throughout every other one. The more spider web way is that they all go consistent, whether um, it's going up or down, but every one goes that same way in every kind of pizza slice. So that's the way I'm gonna do it since it is kind of a Halloween-ish project. So I'm gonna start really small. I'm gonna kind of exaggerate mine as they go down to aim it, almost look like it's kind of going into a tunnel. So you might not be able to see too much of it right away because it's gonna be pretty small. But again, I'm going up and then down, trying to almost meet it together with that line. And they're gonna be closer together down here. And then as I get out, it's gonna get further and further apart. Really far over here. And maybe this one, maybe I'll just see like a little piece of it down there. And then I'm gonna continue that all the way around. All right, sweet, so that looks pretty awesome now. So now I can do the coloring. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that you can do with coloring and I've seen lots and lots of different examples and ideas and things that you can inspire. You can probably just type in op art spider web and get a whole bunch of different ideas. Uh, with this one, what I do wanna show you guys is a little step by step. I'm gonna use color pencils for this one. Start with the green first and I'm gonna pick one of these and show my kids a value scale and have them sometimes even practice a value scale on a separate sheet of paper. What a value scale is, is going from the absolute darkest of whatever tool that you're using to really really light or almost the white of the paper. So really we're almost doing like two kind of value scales from dark to light and then back to dark. We want to get that optical illusion of it kind of going into almost like a little crevice or a little tunnel and then coming out of that where it would be a little bit lighter. You can already see that kind of movement, but it even exaggerates it more when you do it with um, coloring, with adding value. I'm gonna go up and down and up and down, back and forth, sometimes I switch it up. But by the time I get to this part in the middle, I'm barely touching the paper at all. And then sometimes as I go over to this side, then I'll do the kind of trick where if I'm barely touching it in the middle. And then I push a little bit harder and a little bit harder, and a little bit harder. And then I'm really, by the end of it, pushing pretty hard, like not trying to break the color pencil or the crayon. Um, I'm gonna get that kind of value scale, and then I can always clean it up. But I'm gonna do that same thing on the other side, too. I'm gonna go like barely touching, a little bit darker, and a little bit darker, and same thing as it goes down to the end here. now but with a value scale you want to have a consistent value from one side or a smooth transition you don't want to really see those kind of scribbly lines so I kind of clean this up sometimes if I go one way I'll go the other way kind of going on the outside edge pretty dark in those corners and then as I get up to here I'm barely touching the paper at all kind of bl blending that and making a smooth transition go back over here get that edge a little bit darker 
and then try to blend that towards the middle. I feel like this side is looking pretty good now. And then I'm gonna stretch it out for this side as well. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of this. Okay, so that took a little bit longer than I wanted, but you can see um, how it starts to look like it jumps out a little bit more, and I haven't even done it with Sharpie yet. But let's make a little magical powers happen and go into it and finish it off just like... There it is. Bam! Can't forget to add my little friend over here. Hopefully you guys had some fun with this. I did as well. Um, you can see definitely with the colored pencils that made it easy. Well, I shouldn't say easy, but easier to blend um, some of the colors from light in the middle to darker, darker, darker by the time it gets all the way around. And then I took the um, smaller, thinner Sharpie to kind of fine point to get all the other ones. Really happy with how it looks and I can't wait to see um, what some of my students do with this project. So as always, I am Mr. Shooty. This is Mr. Shooty's Art Channel and we'll talk to you guys later.